Sayyidi, for people coming new to Islam, can the Shaykh describe a little about how we should approach Ramadan and what is important to remember or achieve? Yeah, for those who are coming new or for coming old, alhamdulillah, Ramadan is an immense ocean of power. That what we cannot achieve of our actions, we went from the spiritual then we talk the physical, is what we cannot achieve of Divine dress and Divine grace. God gives to us the only way to achieve it is by fasting. So when we commit ourselves to the fast, what Allah is going to grant us of immense realities that we cannot achieve by our praying, by our giving, by anything that we do of an action. So this greatest inaction has the most amount of immense blessings. As soon as we enter into the fast then Divine lights and blessings are dressing the soul. And these are from realities that throughout the year Allah wanted to give upon the servant but they can't achieve it. And the only way to achieve those realities is by their fasting. At the physical level as soon as we enter into a fast we begin to understand the importance of our zikr, our chanting, how much we live to eat versus eat to live because that's a part of still the spiritual path. This world now is they live to eat. Ooh, what I'm going to have for breakfast, you wake up already to go get it. Ooh, what I'm going to go have for lunch, you wake up and you go fix your lunch and then your whole excitement for dinner. So this whole movement of our existence is based on food and how much we want to go get food and how much food is in importance for us. As soon as we fast the pain of hunger is not what is driving everybody insane. The, the pains of hunger is not what making anybody in this hemisphere to be in difficulty, it's just the nafs is going crazy, their ego is going crazy. That you took the fuel from the ego out and as a result of not giving the ego what it wanted, when it wanted it, it actually begins to slow down, it can't move, it can't function, it can't think. And you feel and begin to only understand in the month of Ramadan what your ego is doing with you. Because as soon as the time for breaking fast, you have just a little bit of bread and coffee and all of a sudden you're back completely to normal. You didn't need to eat a whole bunch of food. Your ego only needed to taste something again to feel a sense of, okay, you're not trying to kill us. I'm, I'm back to normal now, I got a little bit of coffee, a little bit of a cracker and, and cookie, I'm ready, ready to go. So you feel that this was not about food. Why I was shutting down, why my body is now putting difficulty upon me, why I don't have the ability to go out and do anything. It was only about the ego putting its brakes on us and saying, I'm not functioning without what I wanted. It's a conditioned animal like a dog that you have within you but you don't seem to have control of it. And he gets very angry when you don't feed him and he doesn't move based on his treats. So have you seen like in the circus when they throw the treats? You throw the treat, <laughs> he goes and then he jumps through another hoop, he jumps in. So he's saying, you're not giving me any treats, I'm not doing any tricks for you. I'm just sitting and that's when people can't function in Ramadan, they're, oh my God. My, my dog's out, he's not, he's not playing anymore <laughs> and they, they can't move and it wasn't about the hunger. And then many other things as soon as you fast you begin to feel the importance of food for people and that to open compassion within our hearts that there are people whom don't have this experience but they feel the pain of hunger and they live day and night with this pain of hunger in which their hunger is no longer their nafs but it's extreme pain. They say the most severe pain is the pain of hunger and it's supposed to open our compassion within our heart and within our being is, Ya Rabbi however this is inconvenient for me and how much this sort of bothers my daily function, my compassion and understanding is that I have to feed people.
and it should take a life in which to feed people and make sure on a daily basis we are feeding, doing good and doing charity. There are people who don't have access to water and we live in a world where water is abundant and flowing. But we give thinking, Ya Rabbi that for those whom don't have that ability, please grant them that ability through our efforts but also don't let me to be deprived of water on the day I need it. And you may not think on this physical world but they say the greatest pain of difficulty and death is shaitan comes to people and gives them the pain of thirst. That's one of the realities of the tariqah. When you don't have tariqah and you don't have bayat, how shaitan comes and converts people at death. That in their phase of dying within their seven breaths shaitan is coming to them and imposing upon them a severe pain, a severe yearning and thirst in which they're feeling, oh I'm dying of thirst, the, the pain is so immense. And shaitan comes to them and says that, I'll relieve you of this thirst, denounce the reality of Prophet and accept so and so. And that's a azab of the death, the pain and suffering of the death. But the tariqahs have an immense blessing that when a tariqah person is dying that is not happening. That they hired a wakil, they hired a law firm. The tariqahs that they join on the time of death, the shaykhs have to be present with that body and intercede and block the shaitan from trying to come and to deal with that servant and the student. So that they lose their faith and pronounce something that they didn't want to pronounce because of the influence of shaitan. So if their whole life they took a tariqah, they took the way of Allah Allah then shows them, now you'll understand how your shaykhs are defenders and they're like a law firm for you. They will represent you in this court of realities. So it means all these blessings is dressing and blessing the servant. But Ramadan has immense lights, immense blessings. And what appears to be a fire of difficulty that many people think, how am I going to do it? 30 days, it's impossible. No, actually that uh, within the first day and a half the tajalli of Ramadan comes and Allah makes it to be cool and peaceful. So the fear of it is always the, the fear that people have and everyone has described that once I enter into it within a day, day and a half, I feel the light and the emanation. And many can only fast in Ramadan because every other month is so difficult because it doesn't have that tajalli. So that becomes again an immense miracle of Ramadan that when Allah wants, He sends a light and He makes the servant to be able to accomplish that gift. He wants to dress them and He makes it easy for them to be dressed by it. So again it's Allah's infinite rahmah and mercy inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, what is our connections or relationships to other Sufi orders? Your connection and relationship to other Sufi orders? Is, is that say hello <laughs> or bonjour, we don't say hello anymore because we say that it has the word hell in it. Say hi, <laughs> hi, 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 whoo, <laughs> yeah. They're a different school so best not to compare notes, don't get into arguments and each, each school has its own professors and, and their own curriculum. So imagine lying in the physical world, there's a university down this street and a university down that street. You can't take courses at both universities because there's a curriculum at one you've signed up for and those professors are going to teach a certain curriculum. You can't take another course at a different university because it's not going to be a part of your curriculum and can throw you off of your testing. So when students get together and start to compare, no, no my shaykh didn't say that, my shaykh said you can't do that, you should, then that's where all these confusions begin to happen. So just to be cordial and polite with each other, that's a, a you know brother on a path, they're in a garden, beautiful garden for them and you're in a garden of your own and you're, you're both beautiful flowers, leave each other alone. But when they want to get together and compare, is my shaykh is better than your shaykh, my teaching better than your shaykh, then it no became no more garden, it became like gardeners. 
<laughs> they want to pl pluck flowers. Yeah, just leave everybody in their garden enjoying their, their, their garden. Don't be a gardener. <laughs> As salamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as salam wa uh, Could you please kindly shed some light on the, how the power of Surat al Kahf will manifest after the appearance of Dajjal and help the one who recites it regularly? Who? What's that? <laughs> how the power of Surat al Kahf will manifest after the appearance of Dajjal. I don't know, that must be something secret he has and he's asking me to <laughs> validate it, I don't know. For importance of Surah Kahf. Yeah, the importance of Surah Kahf is, all, is the whole tariqah that's on the second month of our journey. And that has to do with the power of eighteen, the power of the cave and the reality of the cave. And that that surah is dressing that reality of the cave. So it's, it's not that the appearance of Dajjal is right now. That's the, the cave in which the awliya are moving in this Shams al-Arifin. So there's twelve months, these twelve hijabs are dressing on this journey towards the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad On the second month opens the secret of eighteen which is then Surat al-Kahf which is the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So to be Ashab al-Kahf and to be the companions of the cave. And if you can't be a companion of the cave, you can at least be a dog who follows the companions of the cave. And Allah gave us an, an ability so people can say, oh that's such a high station, I can't do it. No, Allah said, dog can do it, you can do it. Just be loyal and as a result of being loyal, Allah made something that dirty for us to be clean for us. And that has an immense reality that you know, you don't have to worry about where you came from, what you've done. Allah says, be loyal, be good and I'll dress you with a hayba, a majestic dress that actually was immensely powerful. And that dog guarded the cave for those whom were busy in their ibadah and worshipness for Allah so it means then has many, many realities, Surat al-Kahf now, not for, for Dajjal. That is to protect us from Dajjal. Those whom are not in the cave are going to be eaten by Dajjal. So they won't see any benefit. So best to live the Surat al-Kahf now, enter into that cave and enter the way of Sayyidina Muhammad And then from the third Tajalli, the third hijab becomes 27, from 27 becomes 36 in Surah Yaseen. So that is the journey of Shams al-Arifin inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa uh, Sayyidi, what are the, with the different energies or fez from the different taweezes on the SMC website or the purposes? Yeah, the different taweezes are for, for different purposes and uh, get them all and then do we have on, on each one listed what they're good for or where to place them? We should probably put that onto the site where to place them that the uh, Ashab al-Kahf taweez is again like Ashab al-Kahf, that's a protection for the entry of your home. And when Allah described Ashab al-Kahf is that they merely came to the presence of the cave the hayban energy that was emanating put fear into the hearts of people whom have a bad desire. So Ashab al-Kahf and the taweez of Ashab al-Kahf carries their names. As a result of their names on the taweez, their tajalli and their presence is there to, to guard that reality. So that provides a hayba from somebody entering into a premises. The jinn taweez then from these awliyaullah is asking from the jinn communities to provide from their people a protection from what we can't see. That's their world. So they have to come to watch and that's by izzatullah, that's by Allah's will. Allah wills these gifts to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad That's a given for people with very small brain capacity. They say, oh this is this like against Allah's will? No, this is all Allah's will, this is Allah's gift to the ashiqeen 
and those whom following the love of Sayyidina Muhammad these are the treasures of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad That's when I remember we're in the jahiliyyah so nobody understands any of this. And, and they don't even understand when we put the taweezes upon our clothing, they say, why you have taweez upon the clothing? Go and Google Islamic armory. Anybody who has any questions, Google Islamic armory. So in times of battle all their armor was Qur'an and, and the durood and love of Prophet all their helmets were armor, all their face masks were, were Qur'an and Allah's names, all their swords were Qur'an and Allah's names. So everything they put upon it Allah's names and, and words as a power and that gives power to everything, protection to everything. So that is the Islamic way. Then this satanic people told everybody not to do that and as a result then they walk with no protection and nothing dressing them, blessing them and that's all the shaitan wanted. So this is the tradition of Islam, this was the tradition of Islamic buildings and mosques and, and our persons and personalities was to adorn ourselves with Allah's names upon ourselves to be dressed by these realities. And again when you go for washing facility you take those off and you go and wash and clean yourself. When you are again ritually clean then again you put back on if you're wearing an outer garment. The taweez is already wrapped within leather and that's to be secured upon the body at all times. Your greatest battle will be in the washroom facility because that's the abode and the house of shaitan. And then the Naqshbandi Allahu Haqq throughout the house and on the windows of every room in the right corner of every glass throughout the house is the, is the Allahu Haqq taweez. So alhamdulillah all of them available and uh, put them and put them all over the house, put them on the car, put them on the person and personalities of people so that they wear the taweez, the, the ones for the windows, for the rooms, the jinn taweez for each of the rooms can be in the rooms in the house for, for the energies that emit from them from a heavenly source. It's a light that, that people don't see and if they can see then they would see it but it emits a light from Malakut and that light is enough to come after the nefarious creatures and, and uh, beings that have no good intention, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Forgive me for my ignorance but what is the reality of the number 313? Mm, alhamdulillah. You're writing these questions yourself? <laughs> That's a, good, that's a good one. The number 313 inshaAllah is, is from the number of 313 messengers of Allah and out of 124,000 awliyaullah there are 313 whom inherit from the messengers of Allah that they, they have a tongue given to them to deliver a message upon this earth, not that they're messengers. But Prophet gives them an inheritance to teach and that 313 has to be that they carry the reality of this najm, what they call najm al-Sulaiman, najm al-Dawood but it's actually najm Sayyidina Muhammad We said, all my companions they're like stars, any one of them you follow you'll be guided, stars, najm. So Prophet is the owner of all stars. For that's his universe. Everything shining within that universe is a Muhammadan light. So then that is the reality of the star that inherits that reality so that they can speak. So there's three points up and three points down. Anyone whom understands the three points up is the reality of their soul, three points down is then the reality of their physicality. How to tame? their physicality and empower their soul so that these two triangles they begin to cross. That the soul will discipline the physicality and as a result this najm is then brought together. And then Allah sits upon the throne of the believer at that time. So that becomes the one, so it's three points up, three points down 
And if they come together Allah will bring the one into the heart and then from that power that servant can speak representing the one, inshaAllah. And that three plus one plus three is seven, so they inherit from the seven. And these are the seven holy openings of the Divinely Face, inshaAllah. And keep going let me see but the numbers confuse people. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Should books containing witchcraft symbols be burnt or just ripped apart? Throw it in water. And if you, if you have a book containing witchcraft symbols just throw it in water. But if you're trying to look for books that contain witchcraft symbols to burn them, no. You leave these things away. But if you find anything that has something not appropriately, then you throw it into water, inshaAllah. Let the water to dispose of the difficulty. Burning is not something safe. Anytime you try to burn magic you actually may activate it. So burning is not a remedy but the the reality of water is the angels, that the Mai carries, carries realities of malaika, they will take that fire and, and dissolve it. Burning is not a solution. Some people have take something cursed and throw it in fire, actually activated and came very bad against them. So that's not a remedy for anything. <coughs> Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, if I'm always worried about negative energy mm. in people, how can I communicate with people with an open heart? True. Why are you always worried about negative energy in people? Our, our teachings, and we've said many, many times, our teachings are not to make people scared. So I don't know if they're like ladies out there just listening to this stuff scared and petrified and children. No, this is… these are teachings that empower people. What people are scared of is what they don't know. So when you teach people and shed knowledge and light upon a subject, it should give them a sense of power and authority. So then when we understand about energy and we understand about negative people, it was happening anyways. The fact we talked about it didn't mean now you to become scared, I can't go anywhere there everybody… They were already had negative energy, all your life you had people with negative energy. This was only for us to understand, oh my gosh the negative energy is so real. I went to the mall and my eyes got all red, I came back I didn't feel good. So that's correct, I should be meditating. And then you take your meditation serious, you sit and make your contemplation. When you come home from somewhere negative, shower, wash away that negative energy breathe and connect and make the connection, the muraqabah, so that it shows us all of these elements are real. But never to be scared of anyone and scared to go out and scared to deal with people. Well, Allah hasbunallahu wa ni'mal waqeed. Make your zikr, make your connection and, and fear no one but Allah InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah our purpose all the same or do we all have our own purpose? Is our purpose all the same? Well then everybody if it was as a band then everybody would be drumming? Can't be, somebody got to sing, <laughs> somebody's going to drum, somebody's going to do something else. Allah is like an orchestra, everybody has a, a rhythm and a rhyme for themselves. They may be similar but each uniquely different. So no, it can never be the same, it's not homogenized into one. We're not a, a melting pot and everybody going into like a soup of milk but we are salad. Aj cream makes nice salads, <laughs> right? So we each have our own specialty, when you bring it together and mix it, it becomes very flavorful. So we said we described many times, everybody can't come and write but Allah gave certain people the ability to eloquently write. So then that person comes to tariqah, they can give a tremendous support. Somebody else comes with a technology background and they give a, a tremendous technology report. As a matter of fact, where are all the NFT guys out there, the Bitcoin people that we need help? If you're making a dollar off of this Bitcoin and NFT and you're not helping, shame on you. Bring your knowledge and your realities to the way of Sayyidina Muhammad 
and, and teach us, give us the ability to understand this, help us to… For, for our role in all of this that we need understandings and NFTs and Bitcoins and all of these technology. If Allah gave you that, don't keep it to yourself. Bring it for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad to empower them. So this is very important, somebody has an ability in medicine then come towards the tariqah and say, I want to give from my ability, my rizq, my knowledge, my… everybody has something. Allah gave everybody a trade, a skill and ability. If they gave those back, because we said the whole talk was about surrendering your will, whatever Allah gave to me, I gave it back. As a result, we're doing this tariqah work. If I had not given that back, well how would I do my tariqah work? So everybody has a skill and an ability that they should be giving it to Allah and to Prophet first before they just try to use all their skills for only their own enrichment, inshaAllah. Then the tariqah becomes very powerful. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, can you please elaborate a little bit more on the Ayatul Kursi Dua? Ayatul Kursi Dua, just keep making it. Recite the Dua of Ayatul Kursi, it's a tremendous protection and uh, Khadim, the, the caretaker of Ayatul Kursi, Malik al Khandiyas. Then alhamdulillah that name is revealed. Once they reveal the name of a qadim, of, of a caretaker of a du'a from Ayatul Qur'an al kareem then it's a tremendous, tremendous gift from Sayyidina Muhammad Because that which you have a name, you have now an access to. Had you not been given the name, that was a door that you would have never come across. So, Ya Malik al Khandiyas, Aqsamtu alayka Ya Malik al Khandiyas, that grant me from what Allah has granted to you for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad that to grant me this protection, grant me its realities of which I know nothing. And ask for his madad and his support from the what Allah has given. So, when only Allah reveal a name, then there's a power and authority in that name, inshaAllah. Don't analyze it more than that because it's not at your level to understand, you don't need to understand, you just need to recite, recite, recite and be humble as a result. When Allah wants then He inspires the heart. But when people get and come across these things and they want to use their brain, oh what is this, what's that, already are defeated because this way is so astonishingly secret and hidden your brain will never understand and if you're going to come through the door of your brain, you'll be left behind in a real quick time, right? So our path was, I know nothing Ya Rabbi, I know I know nothing and the things I do know is I create a lot of problems for myself. So better I come with not knowing anything, my cup is empty and then I recite, I recite, I recited everything the shaykhs gave, I recite, I recite, I recite until the faith comes in the heart and then Allah Taqullah wa alimukumullah that you had a taqwa, you had a belief, you, you, you did, you persevered. Now let us explain to you what this is, what this is, what this is, what that is. That's different than you trying to use your brain to analyze Allah and to analyze the heavenly kingdom when people can't even understand what's in front of their nose and in this earth. So this way of reality is that I do nothing and I humbly accept that I know nothing Ya Rabbi and that let me just recite and do, recite and do, recite and do from my shaykhs and from the teachings of Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result that faith comes and then Allah gives the heart of that servant understanding, right? They didn't try to understand it at first, there's a big difference. When your mind keeps saying, I'm not going to go through the door until I know what's going on. That's not faith. Faith is, now I'm going through the door, I don't even care what's on the other side. I'm going, going, going. Then that servant has faith in which then now they walk and Allah keeps teaching them. They walk, Allah keeps teaching them because they didn't ask to, to be validate Allah and to validate this and validate that. But with faith they entered in and that's iman. And as a result and then Allah raised their station to be taught. Because now they have taqwa, taqullah wa alimukumullah. 
Why Allah put taqwa first? Why didn't He say, alimukum Allah? Then you'll have taqwa. Right? So it means have a consciousness, have a sense of faith, be conscious and God fearing in everything you do, enter into it, and Allah will begin to teach and inspire the heart for its understandings, inshaAllah. Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, during meditation, energy came in heart and eyes, ears, and between them feels like contract and releasing. Hmm. What is the reality of this? The energy coming and going, there's uh, not, not a, a way to explain a reality. It's just good. Just keep meditating and, and let the energy come into the heart, let the energy come in. If they're opening up the different tajallis upon the ears, the different tajalli upon the eyes, you may feel a pressure, you may feel an energy. And if uh, a, a light is coming or a burden is coming, you may feel a pain or a heaviness, it doesn't matter for you. It's not something you have to know, it's just you have to continue doing it. So when you're doing something good, you're meditating, meditating, contemplating, again don't take a path in which to try to know everything because it's going to stop you. So the, the station of faith, you don't have to know anything. And when people are scared and, and overwhelmed by anxiety, they have to recalibrate their faith. That what are you scared of? Are you scared of dying? Why are you scared of dying? So what are you scared of? Why, why you don't want to come and, and, and do your zikr? Oh, I'm going to catch something, I'm going to die. Well, what do you mean you're going to catch something and you're going to die? If Allah wants you dead, He'll be dead at home too. Nobody escapes the angel of death. So it means in our lives we have to train and train and discipline ourselves that where are you hiding? Where are you running to? When Allah wants you dead, you're dead. You're going to hide from death? Allah says, okay angel of death you go and get so and so, you know, well, I'm, not, I'm gonna hide. He's not gonna find me, I'm gonna be hidden in my bedroom. He's finding you, he knows where you are, <laughs> right? So you, you have to talk to yourself and teach yourself, condition yourself that what are you scared of? Overcome these fears. So then I meditate, oh I feel like I'm gonna have a heart attack, okay you had a heart attack and you're dead, what's the difference? Don't, don't think like that. Tell yourself, no, Allah want me dead, okay then I'm going to die, then I'm going to be with Prophet No problem, I meditate. And then you overcome this fear because if they have this fear, as soon as they feel a little bit they stop. Oh, I felt an energy, I stopped right away, I thought I was going to have a heart attack. Why are you going to have a heart attack? Just because a little bit of electricity came into your heart? No, if Allah wants you dead, you go lie down in bed, you'll be dead. The meditation don't kill anybody. Right? The fear is that stops them. So shaitan may be playing with somebody in energy, they get scared, they stop. But when you come to the realization of life and death, because that's why it's extremes. I say, why he talks like this? I said, because these are the extremes. I'm alive, I'm alive. Nobody can make me die except by Allah And if I'm going to die in my meditation, I'm going there. And if I'm not going to die in meditation, I'm going to die in my bed. Wherever it is that I'm going to die, Allah's going to make that happen. You're not escaping that. So then what is there to fear in between? So then I sit and meditate, my heart is pounding, pounding, pounding and then I go into sujood and I just try to be patient with whatever tajalli is coming. Nothing to be fearing. If Allah wants the person to pass, they're going to pass away anyways. And it would have happened just sitting at the dinner table. When the person can overcome their fear then alhamdulillah they're not scared in the meditation, they're not worried about their, their practices but they're not doing anything bad. It's not that people want to ingest something bad and they don't care if they die, no that, that becomes now something very, very sort of self-inflicted. But we're talking about righteous acts and good character and they do these righteous acts, don't have fear energies and things that are coming to people, pay no attention to it, continue with your zikr, your meditation and your practices. Many energies may come, many pains and, and different uncomfortable feelings and you keep breathing through it and practicing, practicing, practicing. So this is a, an energy world which has an infinite amount of responses and, and reactions inshaAllah. <coughs> 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sayyidi, what breaks the bayah? When you walk away from it, your sins don't break the bayat. Only time that you break the bayat is when you say, I'm breaking my bayat, I'm leaving, I'm not doing this anymore, I'm not doing anything anymore, I'm not… Th and everything begins to fall apart for the servant at that time. So then that's why the, 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 the understanding is no matter what happens, don't break the bayat. Keep the love of Allah keep the love of Prophet keep the practices, you know, keep your, your struggle for love and connection, love and connection. And that's why it's always supreme and the teaching's always about the love of Prophet You may not get along with the character of the shaykh but the shaykh was only a means in which to take your hand and connect you to the love of Prophet So that love always should endure. So that you sit and meditate and see yourself in Medina to Munawwara and, and, and making your salawats, do the awrads that were given, do all the recitations, make the connections to see yourself in Medina and to, to feel that light and that love. And if you continue to have the love for the shaykh then alhamdulillah then you can continue with that. If not then the love for Prophet is there and that should have been established and they make their zikr, they make their connection. But when they break it and then they start to fall away from everything and that's when then th that becomes difficult upon the soul and difficulty in the lives. But alhamdulillah in these last days Allah's given us a lot of motivation not to happen, right? So anyone who's feeling a little bit weary with their bayad, watch the news. Right? Right? I told you ten years ago, not that many people get taweezes from us. <laughs> because it was nice sunny days and beautiful, everybody was great. Now what? Taoists are like flying off the shelf, what? <laughs> well, just watch the news. So Allah gave already a motivation. Anytime you feel like you want to break your bayad, turn on the news. <laughs> oh, Ukraine, now Romania, now Poland, uh, it's coming everywhere. You really want to be in this world with all of those things? Ahlan wa sahlan. And if it works, alhamdulillah, inshaAllah. Subhanahu wa bikir rabbil izzat amma yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa basiri Surat al Fatiha. Shafat ya Rasul Kareem. So many people are coming to guidance, so many people are coming to understandings. This way is the only way that talking about these jinn, these dajjas, this whole system. So alhamdulillah this is the, the heart of Prophet sending so much light and, and guidance on these subjects and, and the things that are happening. Who, who else is talking about that the dajjal is a jinn? You think he's a one-eyed guy coming and running down the street and he's going to scare people? No, he's coming from jinn nations, he's coming with all his jinn tricks, he's already running all his jinn empire on everything, all of these medicines were for their jinns to be able to approach to be close to you. Who taught all these things? These are tariqahs and that's why now outside of tariqah they're watching, saying, what are these people talking about? We didn't even ever hear these things. So alhamdulillah, this is not the time to run, it's the time that people come, إِذَا جَاءَ إِذَا جَاءَ النَّاسْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَاتِحِ nas. A day is coming when you see the droves of mankind coming to these tariqahs. Why? Because the Muhammadan light like a spotlight will shine, right? When the, 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 the orcs of Saran gather everywhere, what happens? The light of Prophet will shine as clear light, clear understanding. When it delineate between black and white, only the light of Prophet will shine in its whiteness and its light and its reality inshaAllah. Oh,